So my name is Bumi Akiremi and I am a machine learning engineer. But then just before I start, um, I mean, you probably all see this meme somewhere, maybe, and then you're like, how, how does this work? How is it that before, maybe you even have a conversation with a friend and it seems like Google already saw it. And then you search for something or you just open your phone and that's the next ad to see. So are they really listening to your microphone or are they reading your WhatsApp messages or are they using your camera or, you know, or are they reading your mind? These are probably questions that we've had at one point or the other, but then we all, um, well, I think we're all technical guys, or most of us technical guys, and you're like, that, it's not possible to read my mind. So what really is going on? And that's what uh, gets to debunk in this session today. Okay, so I'm a machine learning engineer, and surprisingly, I have recently found interest in a couple of areas like policy, economics, um, why? I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm just a pretty curious person and I would like to have like um, a broader view of the world. I mean, I'm not doing a PhD, so I probably don't have to narrow a particular, uh, um, a particular area. And I also like to participate in hackathons, right? I, I like to hack a lot. And I'm also a community advocate. I super love what we do at EuroPython. I love the Python community, I try to contribute it as much as I like. And something that really caught my interest this past few weeks has been quantum machine learning. Like, yeah, I, I really don't know why, but I met this friend and we started talking and I think it's probably an interesting area. So outside tech, I'm a poet, I like to write, and sometimes probably find me taking pictures, weird pictures. <laughs> yeah. So back again to this photo. Um, how do these big organizations, how do they actually leverage our data? And how do they take, I don't know, do they actually track our every move? Um, what data are they actually tracking? And um, how do that data translate to relevant ads? And how are the algorithms so good that they can literally predict what you're going to buy next or what you're going to need next or the next phone that just suits you? Okay. So how, how do they do that? Now, before I start that, I just want to give an overview of um, what talk is going to be about. I'm um, going to talk about data and ML ecosystem. And by data, I'm narrowing it specifically to ads prediction data. Also going to talk about some key concepts in ads prediction. And we're going to look at a design flow or some design flow of um, an ad prediction system, how um, the various layers of algorithms and filtering that the data has to go to before you have a very tuned, and I mean fine-tuned ad that you're most likely going to click. And how the advertiser and the advertising platform benefits from it too, because there is the side where you see, get to see ads, and then there is the other side where an advertiser hopes to get like the most benefits. And the advertising platform also hopes to make the most profit. So you have like three key players in this conversation, okay? And of course, we need to also talk about some ethical considerations because there have always been questions and there would always be questions about, um, I might track every moment, right? What data are they seeing? What data can I restrict them from seeing? You know, and what are the policies around this? And also, I'll be open to take questions. Okay, so the data ecosystem is, um, you, you can 
come for, from a two-dimensional perspective and say between you and the advertiser. And by an advertiser, I mean someone who wants to advertise a product, right? So the advertiser creates an advertisement and uploads this to the advertising platform. It could be Google, it could be Facebook. And probably some of us have tried to create advertisements ourselves. And then this goes to like, um, I can say a repository where you have so many ads. So you could have like millions of ads, right? And by ads, I mean like active ads, yeah? Now, how does this, how can you get, how does this sort of narrow down to you and you know, get an ad that's specific to you in particular? So you, a user sends a query. Maybe you go to Google and then you search, um, maybe you search for a Lenovo tablet, for example, right? Or you search for maybe baby kids or just something. So now, how does that ad know that this particular brand is what you should get? Okay, so now you send your query and your query goes to look for a set of related ads. Now, related ads, this could be thousands, like 100,000, could be so many related ads. And then predict the ones that you're most likely to click. This could narrow it down to maybe 50 or 30. And then there is another system where, um, where the ads is actually auctioned. Right, auction is probably a familiar word to you, where you're like, okay, who's the highest bidder? So among these top um, ads, so which of these advertisers sort of pay the highest for it? So the, of course, the more, um, the more your bid, the higher the, your chances, yeah? So, and then you probably come down with a list of maybe top one, top two, depending on the platform that this ad is being displayed. So you get your results and ads. So this is like, um, just like a quick overview of, of what the data ecosystem is like. Now the ML ecosystem is um, probably what some of us are familiar with. We have data, pipelines, you have ML models, if you have um, where they are trained, stored, served, and monitored. Now, if you're quite familiar with the ML system, you know that these things are continuous. So, for example, in this scenario, you have like so many models. You can have like um, three models, four models, five, ten models performing one single step in the whole ad prediction process. Okay? So, how do you efficiently manage training? Maybe you're training in real time or you're training near real time or um, and you're also managing like loads of data. So for example, a platform like Google has like so many users. So how do you manage that influx of data while delivering on efficiency, cost, and latency? Okay, so while you as a user, you're like, ugh, ads again. On the back end, there is like a whole lot going on on how the data is being managed and narrowed down to you. So if you're saying, okay, uh, maybe um, um, this company X is actually tapping into my microphone and listening to the conversations I have. So um, I'm not saying that's true, right? I'm just giving a scenario. So how do you think that company is going to manage, not just for you, but for all of the users possible? Right, and efficiently track and narrow down that, okay, this is this. Is this. So that's, that's not possible, <laughs> right? And you're gonna ask questions like, for how long are they listening to you? So some things are just like, not, not possible because when it's against data privacy, unless you're actually speaking to, maybe speaking to the product, you shouldn't, no company should be tapping into your microphone. I mean, except it, um, you're being asked or something. So, um, yeah, um, in the ML ecosystem, there is a whole lot going on, and there are questions there around um, sustainability, efficiency, costs, right? Because if you have so many models doing so many things, 
right? And they're all in a pipeline. So how do you get your data from the source down to that particular ad, which is going to be, which is the most performing in the minutest amount of time, right? So these are, these are the questions that we answer. Now, some key concepts in, um, in advertising, you have lead optimization, some you are actually familiar with, like ads ranking, cost per click, right? And some you're not really familiar with, like what's conversion rate? So if you if you're probably have like your own personal blog, you, you'd see things like conversion rate, so like who clicks it, how do they click it, where do they come from, from WhatsApp, from maybe from search or whatever things. And then cost per acquisition, that is cost for acquiring a particular customer or maybe not acquiring, but for doing a particular thing. So for example, your, your goal is, okay, I, I want this person to sign up on my app. So I'm putting an advertisement for people to sign up on my app. For some other people is, I'm putting an advertisement for people to buy this product, right? So it, it could have like different goals. So there is also bid optimization where you're trying to determine the optimal bid price for an advertisement placement, right? Which is part of what we do at Chava, help you sort of figure out um, what budget do you allocate for particular advertisers, you know, like that. okay. So now you're also asking what data do they track? Um, they track user demographics, your age, your gender, location, language you speak, you know, all those kind of things. Um, they also track your browsing history, past purchases. I mean, some of these things, you probably see them in your Google profile settings, right? Um, now, that's you. They also track other things about the ads itself. So it's previous impressions, clicks, conversions. So they want to know the history of um, these ads. How has it performed? So if I'm recommending an ad to you and it performs really bad, right? So that says something about that advertisement itself, yeah? So maybe it's, it's not the right, it's, it's either um, it's not being presented well or, you know, there's some other questions around that. So, because the advertising platform wants to make sure that I'm getting the most out of, um, out of whatever ads I'm getting, I'm pushing out, yeah. So, they also track um, other things like the contextual data, the ad placement data, that is what network, who's the publisher, and all those kind of things. Okay, so, um, yeah, let's look at the ads prediction system itself. So this is just like a more condensed view of, um, of, of what I showed before. So this is, yeah, this, was, this is the graph I showed before where um, you, you have the user and you have the advertiser, right? And now there are different um, data types when it comes to ads. You probably had me mention that there are specific data related to the ad itself, to the advertiser who is advertising, to the user, right? And then you have some cross features between the ads, the advertiser and the user, and also context. So context is also really important. These are like the important key feature types and you should also be able to like identify them. For, so for some things like campaign ID, um, publisher ID, network ID, and all, all those other kind of things. So these are like some of the um, feature types. So now, how, how does this actually work? So you're the user, right? Maybe searching through social media, uh, Google, whatever search platform. I mean, and you don't always have to search. So this is just like a, a limited um, sample. So your query, either your query is clicking on something or typing something or sending a voice command, it's, it's a query, then this gets combined with the context, your user demographics, and maybe what 
every any other data that the advertising platform chooses to add. And this goes through the first phase, which you can call like selecting related ads. So first of all, you want to check, okay, what ads are related to this particular query that I've constructed. So your first batch can be maybe um, 100,000, could be 10,000. Like, so your first batch should be, can be like, um, can be so much. And then, okay, so imagine if I have like um, 5,000 ads. My next question is, okay, how do I select which of these 5,000 is the best? Yeah, so the first, in the first um, stage, maybe you want to use a less, um, a less complex model, like a simple model, like logistic regression. So first of all, filter that out because it's simple, it's fast, doesn't need like, um, like doesn't need like too much complexity. So the place where you need more complex models are where you're trying to select the relevant ads and also predict um, the high performing ads. So you have like 5,000 related ads. Now, which of these 5,000 is actually relevant at this time with this context in this particular demographics, you know, and other questions that you have around it. So now, um, yeah, so now you have like, um, maybe this narrows it down to about 100. Yeah, so now the next stage now is which of these hundreds would actually be high performing? So you have a more complex model to, um, you have a more complex model to actually filter this out to maybe 10, right? 10 or five, it really it depends on you. And now the most interesting part is where you actually get option. Now this is where the advertising platform wants to get the most, right? The advertiser wants to get the most and they want you to click the ad. So which ad is going to sort of fulfill all of that three criteria? And that's where the ads actually come in, right? And they rank the ads by the highest bidder. This highest bidder is, is um, high performing, right? The ad is high performing. And if it's, if it's not a new ad, maybe it's like, it had that already has like some performance data. In the past, these ads are um, maybe performed really well, right? And then is offering maybe almost the highest amount of money. And then they push this out to you. So this could be maybe you see it on your laptop or maybe as a pop-up or whatsoever form. Now the platform in which you see these ads also determines the number of ads you see. So sometimes maybe you see one, sometimes you see two, maybe like YouTube, you'd see one maybe in the midst of like um, two videos, right? So it just depends on, um, yeah. And also the platform also determines what kind of ads you see. So. The format of the ads, right? Remember I talked about ad specific feature. Is it a video? Is it a text? Is it an image, right? That also determines the platform and that also determines um, whether you get to see it or not. Okay. So some um, information that I didn't include in the graph is um, online training. So, because of this kind of systems are, they get like easily outdated. So you need to keep training and training and training and training and training. Like, and that frequency um, depends on you, right? Because you're always getting data, right? From the user, from the ads performance itself. So maybe these ads get pushed and what's the, what's the performance, right? So you're always getting data. How often do you want to, um, do you, do you want to um, retrain your model? And there is also something you probably want to be um, aware of, right? Because if you have like so many negative samples, right? You, and you have like fewer positive samples. So how do you sort of balance the model so that the model doesn't go biased towards like uh, negative samples, right? That's where you need to do some recalibration. Um, in, in the ad selection, 
you talk about constructing query, which is also really important. What are the other factors? The other things that probably I, I didn't mention here, right, that also come um, when you're trying to like construct a query. And ads prediction, predicting user engagement. So there are actually a lot of questions that you need to ask around these systems. So it's not like um, you just, you're just gonna take what I say and you're just gonna do it. No, there's a lot of questions that you need to ask not just with the developers, with the stakeholders, I mean all forum stakeholders from the executives to the advertising platform, like, um, yeah. So all this comes in the whole, um, in the whole system. Okay, so just to quickly talk about um, metrics. So, for people who haven't worked in production environments before, you're probably familiar with accuracy, precision, I mean, yeah. But then in the real world, you're looking at a whole lot um, set of the metrics entirely, right? Looking at click-through rates, looking at what's the return on ad, ad spend, brown rates, lift metrics, engagement metrics, because all this really determine if you're pushing out the right ads or there is a problem somewhere. And that's why this needs to continually be man, uh, monitored so that you can figure out if there's a flop with the model or if there's an issue somewhere and you can easily mitigate this. Okay, so um, ethical considerations, privacy, right? Um, I, I know that organizations now fighting for anonymity and, and things and things like that, but then even anonymity has its own levels, right? So there are different levels to anonymity. Um, yeah, so I, I think that every country has their own data guidelines, so it's best to sort of stick to the regulatory compliance specific to each country. And as much as possible, it's good to have a very transparent um, and accountable model, right? So make sure that your model is transparent, you know what's going in, you know what's going out, you know why. And you also want to avoid manipulation and exploitation because it is very possible where you're manipulating the user, right? While trying to get the most profit, you're actually manipulating them to go towards, um, for example, elections, yeah? So you're manipulating the people to go towards this candidate or that candidate, that kind of thing, right? So um, thank you so much. I hope you've learned one or two things. Yeah, and you have questions. Yeah, so thanks for me. And if you have any questions, please come to the mic. Um, hello. Um, thank you for the talk. I was wondering if you have um, any suggestion to get the right return on ad spend from, from Meta, uh, because I'm working on a project and it uh, gets sometimes very muddy, and uh, we're, we're not being able to, to get that metric right because it depends on the amount spent and the purchase conversion value, and sometimes it goes, goes really high, etc. That's one question. And the other one is, mm, for unbalanced data inside your, your data set, if, for example, you got uh, zero clicks for a campaign, let's say, uh, do you balance the data for your algorithms, or what, what's your suggestion on that? Uh, thank you. Okay, for the first question, um, I don't think I might be able to answer it here in public because it's also part of what I'm doing at Coachella, so like confidentiality. Maybe you can reach out to me and we can have like a private conversation on that, okay? So um, the second question, well, I, I think it depends. For, for example, if it's just clicks, right? Um, okay, yeah, I wanted to ask, so is it that this is like an entirely new ad, yeah? Um, actually not. They've been running uh, the different campaigns for about uh, four years, I think. Yeah. Okay, so this particular ad running for four years but still has zero clicks. Uh, yeah, like at some points, uh, let's say for, for some particular days, because we get the data points uh, up to, to a day to see which, uh, which campaign, for example, is uh, the winning campaign. 
which campaign has, for example, zero clicks at some, some time, some, some particular day, for example. And then we try to, to get or, or to predict which one is gonna, going to be like the best campaign. Okay, okay. So if it was an entirely new ad, I would have said maybe you sort of add some values to make it not zero because, of course, a new ad has no history. But if that's not the case, you want to look at um, if clicks is the only metric with zero, right? You can also use like um, some of the historical data. So it's, it's not like um, it's isolated. So if it's zero, that's telling you a lot about how that ad is actually doing. And if you should be pushing that ad to that particular, um, to the set of users or customers you're pushing it to, right? So you probably want to ask yourself like questions around if we're doing, pushing the right things to the right people, right? Because I, I, I wouldn't say the best thing to do is to pad it up, right? Because that alone, like um, choose those sort of questions. So why do you have zero clicks? So that, that's the first question. And if you probably have an answer to that, if it's something that maybe, maybe the platform you're showing it to is, does not allow users to click or you know, there are other questions. So I initially would not suggest um, adding values to uh, make it like the rest because um, that says a lot. But again, you said that some days you have zero, some other days you have, I think that's really the way time series data is. You know, some days you have some more, um, some days you have some less. But again, you also want to ask questions as to why that, why you're seeing that trend. I think that's going to inform what you do next. But I would not default saying um, at data to make it look like the rest. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Well, in that case, uh, I would like to thank again for Fumi for the wonderful presentation. And let's give a round of applause. Thank you.